The reason I played this deck for this tournament is actually more of, I build, I have a lot of cards, I can build any fair deck, I have a lot of people that come along with me, go, like to play Legacy Locals, and they like to build the blue decks, they like to play blue decks, they like to play the tier one decks. So this is like my fun deck, put it together originally, just to have multiple decks, two or three decks, and then of the silly little fun decks I build, this is the only one that I was actually like, okay, this deck's actually really good, like this is a competitive thing. And so I've been playing this as like my fun deck when I'm building decks for other people for the last two or so years. My name is Hayden, the deck that I'm playing today is Loam Pox. Basically, it stems from the original deck just Pox, and the big problem with Pox is that you go, you deny all their resources, you use all your resources, and then you get in this awkward thing where like, you don't really have anything, they don't have anything, and then what? And then you draw Dark Ritz and you die. So basically what the Life from the Loam engine does is it gives you Baron Moore as a way to just draw infinity cards and it just gives you a big land toolbox that you can get back, get back, and it gives you a bigger end game is what the Loam part of Loam Pox is. So it's basically the Pox deck with a better end game. The biggest way this deck wins is that it doesn't lose. After this deck doesn't lose, how it eventually wins is either through Life from the Loam dredges or discarding. You, we have various ways that we're also discarding cards as our opponent is, such as Lily and Smallpox. Uh, you get another Spirit in the Graveyard, which just infinitely recurs. You hit him for two every turn. You can win with Mistress Factory. And then kind of the like late game, like I win the game card, is I play Worm Harvest, which it puts a 1-1 one, one black and green worm into play for each land in my graveyard. Since I'm playing Life from the Loam, I'm dredging lots of lands in my graveyard. And it also has Retrace, which means I can cast it by discarding a land when it's in my graveyard. So I can just cast it turn after turn and get Infinity Worms. The biggest key card is Life from the Loam. You have Baron Moors, so when you have Life from the Loam with Baron Moors, you just have like, you're drawing two cards a turn. When you get two Baron Moors, you're drawing three cards a turn. If you have a lot of mana, you can cast Life from the Loam, get Baron Moor, cycle for Life from the Loam, recast it. You can basically just cast, you can draw as many cards as you have, that you have mana to draw. You can also infinitely recur Wastelands. You can infinitely recur Cabal Pit, which is a land. If you have Threshold, you can pay one black tap and sag it to neg to a creature. If you're playing against a creature deck, you can just keep casting Cabal Pit over and over again. And whenever they have a creature you need to answer, you Cabal Pit it. Whenever they don't, you could do something else that turn. If they get rid of your like key lands, such as Tabernacle, you can just get them back. You can also, if you're attacking with Mistress Factories, blocking with Mistress Factories, they die, get those back. So that's just like a big value card. That's kind of the linchpin of the deck. And then you have like your standard Pox cards, which are your Smallpox, your Sinkhole, and your Him. And those are just denying all your opponent's resources, getting them to like a starvation point. And then adding green also allows us to play Abrupt Decay, which is just an insane card, deals with a lot of permanents, can't be countered. So going through my mana base, it's bigger than most deck mana bases. We have our like standard, we need lands, we need to cast spells. So we run five fetch lands, four bios. Uh, we need black, we need green, we play Mox Diamonds, that's kind of like a cheating lands. So game one, we can be greedy and not play a Swamp. We also play our own Wastelands, which are just really good in this deck with Life from the Loam. You can keep playing them, you can just Wasteland forever. We play four Mistress Factories. Uh, that's usually our primary win con. It also is good on defense, it blocks. It's a card we want probably every game. And then like end game, we want multiples. The more we have, the faster we can win. We play three Urborgs. I play four Mistress Factories, four Wastelands, also a Tabernacle, all of which don't tap for colored mana. Trying to hit double black can be hard. Three Urborgs helps with that. And also, uh, endgame, if we're at a low life, we can tap our fetch lands for black mana. So like that's another thing. Or if we like run out of lands to search for. I play three Baron Moors. That's a built-in draw engine from Life from the Loam. And I can just cycle those, draw more cards, get them back. Uh, we play two Cabal Pitch, which we use to kill creatures. The reason I was playing one, I upped that to two, because it doesn't come and play tapped. You tap it black, take a damage, which like early game you can take one or two damage. So it's like actually a fine land to play on turn one or turn two and cast things off of. We play a one of Bajuku Bog, which like it's kind of odd. It's better when you're playing crop rotations and you can like instant speed Bajuka Bog people. But in the main, it's like a nice one of that. Like you'll discard it to Lily, you'll discard it to Smallpox when it's not relevant. It'll end up in your graveyard. It's a nice like I have one card in my deck to beat the unfair graveyard decks main board. And then the final card is Tabernacle, 
it's legendary, so it's you never want to have two of them. It also doesn't tap for any mana, so like when they're not playing against creatures, it's actually bad. It's just a, like it's a card that literally just does absolutely nothing. So against creature decks, especially when I can wasteland lock them, if they have creatures out and I play Tabernacle, like eventually I can just get this point where they have no lands and all their creatures die and they can't play creatures, they can't do anything. It just beats creature decks. I also play a one of Entomb, and usually I'll get Life from Alone with it, but I can also use it to get my bullet lands, such as Tabernacle or Cabal Pit, Baron Moor, whatever I want. I can tutor four with Entomb. And the reason I play one creature in this deck is this creature doesn't want to be played in decks except for decks that only play one creature in their deck. It's Nether Spirit. On your upkeep, if he is the only creature in your graveyard, he comes into play. And that's all it is. It's three for a 2-2. Two, two. You don't want to cast him, but you dredge into him, you discard him off Lily, you discard him off Smallpox, and then he just comes in every turn. And then end game, he wins the game. I can attack with him. And like if my opponent is playing, like if their destruction isn't Swords, if it's Lightning Bolt, if it's Lily, if it's Abrupt Decay, they can't actually kill him because they kill him and he just comes back. And once again, I can only play one of him because if there's two of them in the graveyard, they don't come back and that's awkward and then they do nothing. I play a one of Maelstrom Pulse. It's kind of like a catch-all. Like sometimes they play Jace and it's really hard if they're fate selling you to like just fight it off with Mistress Factory. Really annoying. Sometimes they play like other awkward permanents. It hits sneak attack, just hits lots of relevant permanents. Don't want to play a lot of them, don't really need a lot of them. The permanents that cost more than three, I can usually keep them off that many lands to cast them anyways, but it's just like a just in case. I also play Raven's Crime. Now, this is a card I can search for with Entomb. Uh, Raven's Crime is one black mana sorcery, target player discards a card. Not that impressive, much better discard, but it has retrace, so I can cast it again by discarding a land. So when I have lots of lands in my hand, especially when I can draw three lands turn with Life and Loam, I can Raven's Crime someone three or four times a turn and I can just wreck their hand, they can't hold on to cards. I play four Abrupt Decays, really good removal spell, can't be countered, amazing against Delver decks, amazing against all decks, just destroys all the permanents that cost three or less. You know what it does. I play four Lily. Lily's an awesome card. It beats creatures. You can like play it, kill their creature. They play another creature because they're like, all right, it's at one, I'll swing back and kill it. Then you kill that creature with Abrupt Decays or Smallpox. It stays around, just gives you tons of tempo. People can't beat it, it's all, it's all just reasonable. And then like against the non-creature decks, I just make them discard. It, like I get my all, it, it wins games. Uh, I play the one of Worm Harvest, that's my big win con, like I win the game, get lots of 1-1 one, one Worms, that's another card I can retrace so I can keep casting it. And then my Pox cards, I play four Hymns, which is two cards at random. It's a, the best card advantage card I think in Legacy in terms of like pure card advantage. Like they talk about cards like, like cards like Brainstorm's really good. It's not actually card advantage. You're not actually going up in cards. Him, you actively get two of their cards for one of yours. And it's random, they don't get to pick. You, sometimes you can just beat people, you hit their two lands, they can't play things, they're done. I play four sinkles. Some decks play basic lands. When they play basic lands, you sinkle them. Also, it's like good for if you're just like trying to get rid of all their lands really fast and they're playing a land each turn, you can have a turn where you sinkle them and wasteland them, get two lands one turn. It's good. It's like it's probably not the best card in the deck. It probably could be something else, but I personally I like it right now, played it today. It comes in and out. And then one of the best cards in the deck, the name of the deck is Smallpox. So, how Smallpox is, play four of them. Each player loses one life, loses a land, discards a card, and loses a creature. I don't play creatures, the creatures doesn't hit me. I can get my lands back, like, I can eventually come out on lands. If I played a Mox Diamond, I can be head on lands. When I'm live from the Loaming, I have a lot of cards in hand to discard. It's just an insane card, it gives me a lot of advantage. When they go land creature and I go smallpox, I'm usually winning those games and that's what it does. So my sideboard, um, if decks are playing Blood Moon, if they're playing their own wastelands, if I feel like I need a basic land, I do have a basic swamp in my sideboard, I can bring it in. If a deck isn't playing any basic lands of their own, I can also bring in Ghost Quarters as my fifth wasteland and it's just, it's strip mine at that point. Um, I have Caracas, I bring it in against Sneak and show, obviously, but it's also good against like death and taxes. It's good against like some other weird decks that I just know play a lot of legendary creatures. I play a toxic deluge because that card kills every creature. If you're playing against sneak and show and they uh, show and tell Emrakul, like you can go to five against that deck. You can actually just pay 15 life and kill it. It also kills all of the creatures that have less than 15 toughness as well. Um, I play a one of ensnaring bridge. I like it when people can't attack me. It gives me like a nice little cushion to set up get a nice engine going with Life from the Loam and Baron more. So like, if I want to bring in Ensnaring Bridge, like it's good against like the faster decks where I like need like a little cushion to slow them down. 
I play a one of Maelstrom Pulse, which is just bring in a second Maelstrom Pulse for when I really need it. If they're playing things that cost more than three, I bring in Maelstrom Pulse. I also bring it in against like Empty the Warren decks, so like Belcher, because I can Maelstrom Pulse, Empty the Warren's tokens, and kill them all. Um, I have a one of Necroplasm. So this creature, it is a three mana for a one one with Dredge two, so I can keep casting it. On my upkeep, it gets a plus one, plus one counter. On my end step, I destroy all creatures whose converted mana costs are equal to the number of plus one, plus one counters on it. So, the turn I play it, on my end step, it destroys all zero drops. So like Dryad Arbor, Memnite, not all that important. More important is the next turn it's in play, it destroys all one drops. Decks that play a lot of one drops, I have this board wipe that it takes a turn slower, but it costs three mana, and I can play it over and over and over again, and I can attack with it. And then next turn it destroys all two drops, destroys all three drops. I guess a lot of decks, that's all their creatures. So in three turns, I destroy all their creatures and I can just cast it every four turns. And then the rest of my sideboard is I have four Chalice of the Void. I only play two one drops, so conveniently I can take them out, take two other cards out, play Chalice of the Void. A lot of decks are really weak to Chalice of the Void. A lot of decks can't beat a Chalice on one. A lot of decks have a problem against Chalice on zero. So even if I don't have like my Mox Diamond two mana start, I can put Chalice on zero. And then my final four cards are Leyline of the Void. I hate playing against Dredge. Like, that's the big reason. It's just annoying. And then it's also good against a lot of other decks. It's good against Rug Delver. It's good against Reanimator. It's good against Niche Graveyard decks. I, I just wanted a good card to deal with Graveyards. Didn't want to deal with Graveyards today. My best matchups are decks that want to play a lot of creatures and not win very fast. So, like, your Death and Taxes is really good. Like, I can just beat the actual deck Death and Taxes with a Cabal Pit game one. They, it just beats them. It doesn't have a color, Mother Runes can't get around it, it beats them. But I'm particularly good against other slower creature decks. My worst matchup is decks that win on turn one. I don't, I don't play Force of Will. I only play two one drops. Like I, a lot of times I don't even have a turn one play at all. Also, a big problem right now is that a lot of people are playing Deathrite Shaman. That's a really good card against me. It beats my Wastelands in a way in that like they can stay ahead on mana, like it keeps them ahead of me. And then also it just takes the cards out of my graveyard that I'm wanting to loam, or like takes out my Nether Spirit, takes out my Raven's Crime. It's just a really good card against me. So Deathrite Shaman and Fast Combo decks would be my worst matchups. It is kind of like a fringe deck, and I don't I like playing like kind of the off decks. Like I can build the best decks, whatever, but like this is fun. This is you're doing something different. Every time I play this deck, someone sees my deck and they're like, that's cool. They want me to tell them what I'm doing. Like, people sit next to me, the person across from me. Like, I like playing this deck other people haven't seen and like making them think and like, okay, I know how to interact with Delver, but how do I interact with Lompox? And it just like, it's a game where I have a really interactive deck, I have to think a lot, and I like putting my opponent in a position where they have to think a lot. I like playing a game where no matter who wins, whoever wins actually deserve the win. Thank you.